And now the moment we've all been waiting for. <laughs> Larva Labs is John Watkinson and Matt Hall, two Canadian software engineers and creative technologists who originally met in the computer science program at the University of Toronto in 1998. They have been working together for over 20 years on a large number of and wide range of projects, including many apps and games for several mobile, mobile platforms, genomics, genomics analysis software, the largest open source repository of legal documents, and a machine vision and audio signaling system that enables the blind to run unassisted while at Google. Their first blockchain art project was done in 2017 and it is a little project called CryptoPunks which was conceived as an experiment in digital ownership and value. The project itself is a self-contained system that records ownership of each CryptoPunk while also allowing for transactions between unknown and untrusted parties. It is effectively an artwork that contains its own perpetual global no-fee auction house. As of 2023, it has performed almost $3 billion of transactions. Everybody, these motherfuckers are the whole reason any of us are here. Let's give a fucking rock star welcome to these son of a bitches, insane visionaries, art world disruptors, Monkey J. Pick Perthers, the creators of CryptoPunks, Matt and John! Alright, I'm so happy to announce you guys are in the final stretch now. Just two and a half more hours of talks. So we're almost wrapping it up. Mike's gonna be up here all night, too. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> oh, sweet God. Hey, wait, before we start, before we start, I did want to say um, thank you to you and thank you to the staff for putting this on. And it's been like such a crazy event. If we could have a big round of applause for people and oh, the staff. It's really been a crazy, special thing. And, and thank you to guys, for you guys, for allowing and trusting me to just be like, play in this world and just you know, go ape shit with it. Like, I, I really appreciate that. It's such a huge, huge honor to, to have you guys here. So let's go back to the beginning, as I like to do, because I'm a crypto punk noob, and I don't know any of that shit that everybody in the audience is probably like, man, I know all that shit. <laughs> How long did you guys, when did you first start the project? Between sort of the time it was released, and you're like, hey, let's do this little blockchain experiment. Yeah, I feel like it really, when we started thinking about digital collectibles, it was way back in 2011, really. We had done, um, you know, in our earlier career, we did a lot of collaborations with this group at Google called the Creative Lab. And one of the projects we did when Android was fairly new was a project you might have heard called Androidify. And it was like a way to basically turn the Android logo into a custom version of yourself. You could pick your clothes and hair. And that, that was interesting. That was sort of early in mobile where people were, um, uh, you know, identifying themselves. I'm an iPhone person, I'm an Android person, and so it was really successful and people were using it as their Twitter profiles and everything. And it just kind of got us thinking, we're like, oh, there's something cool happening here, you know? And, and there was some other kind of avatar generators that were around at that time. And um, so then somehow we, we kind of moved from thinking that these avatar things are cool to thinking like, it'd be cool to be actually collect these things, you know, and I think we even had like a random generator that we were using for that, but if I that was kind of cool too, it's like, oh, it's fun to make a random one and then think about who that person is, you know, and so that was sort of the beginning of thinking about it, but that was still six years before we actually got started, you know. Yeah, and I think we, I thought it would be cool to have like, you know, we collected all this stuff when we were kids, like, you know, hockey cards, because we're Canadian, and uh, stickers and all sorts of weird stuff. And we like, there should be a digital version of this. And we kept trying like apps and stuff and it didn't feel good, you know, it didn't feel cool. Like you'd be like, oh, you got a rare one. It's like, did, did I, you know, like, um, <laughs> so it took a while, like for, the, for that to sort of like, you know, germinate, percolate, whatever the word is, until it came together. Remember that Star Wars? There was no, 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 it was Star Wars. Yeah, there was a Star Wars collectible card. 
that got released at some point. Yeah. Just right now, cards. <laughs> you, know, just, like, you, just, you, know, you just had these cards in your phone, and I remember I had, like, I just kept getting, like, all these, like, uh, <laughs> you got the worst shit. Yeah. Yeah. Or something. Yeah, then I was like, every, every day you get like a pack and open it, like, you've got a moisture farmer. <laughs> I just unlocked the fucking moisture farmer? This is the worst. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I got like a, like a Han Solo, but then I got like a different Han Solo that had like a, you know, different color around it. I'm like, what? I don't know. I don't know what any of this is. I don't know. Yeah. Some server over there says that I have this or not. It's, you know, it's completely not compelling. So you guys were trying to do something around collecting for sort of like quite some time. You were like, okay, let's, uh, I'm trying to do this. And this is way before the, the blockchain was sort of like, you thought about connecting those two. You were still trying to like, what is an interesting way that we can make a digital collectible? Yeah, and we, we, we knew about Bitcoin and then eventually Ethereum a little bit, but it wasn't, we kind of were looking for something to solve that collectible problem and then I think it was Matt who, who just kind of stumbled across the theory. Like, you know, we knew about it, but we didn't really understand how, you know, what sort of the breadth of things you could do with smart contracts and how powerful that was. And once you discovered that, we were like, wait, I think we can do this flexible thing on Ethereum. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a surprise. Like, we're all in this room, we're all used to, like, sort of blockchain, what's different about it, what's interesting about it. But it was kind of a mental leap, even for us as developers, to be like, wait. Who like who runs what? Like who executes what? And like we don't get to update this anymore. And like that's nuts, but that's also cool. And so it took a little while to sort of absorb all that. Yeah, there's definitely some different sort of computer science paradigms there. So uh, this is a question I kind of asked you last night. You sort of touched on it a little bit, but what other inspirations at the time were, were sort of around there that you kind of like brought to this project? And that, sort of really affected the, either the aesthetic of it or the, the kind of, you know, conceptually, uh, you know, part of it. Yeah, we had, um, we had made a game, we, I mean, probably 15 years before that or something, and it was like a little RPG game that was very 8-bit, really small, even smaller than, you know, CryptoPunks are 24 by 24, these were 16 by 16 pixel uh, little monsters and everything, and, and I, I remember I made a little poster of those, and it's like, they look cool all together, you know, and it reminded us, of, once again, of our, our childhood collectibles, you know, it's like all these little characters that are similar but different, you know, and there's something about, the human brain loves that, when there's like, there's this sort of consistent set where they all belong together, but they're all sort of unique and different, and um, uh, so yeah, that was sort of, uh, that was something that we were bringing into this. Um, also, yeah, just in terms of like, how it looks, yeah, would we both just kind of like punk aesthetic, you know, would we, it's sort of like all things punk, even though we're not exactly punkers ourselves for a couple of computer science uh, graduates. But the, uh, um, so yeah, that, that played into it a bit. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think any other. No, I'm trying to think back. Like, I think the punk thing was partially like fit the aesthetic of like what we loved about the crypto thing once we got into it. It was like the permissionless nature because we were coming from the app store world and it was like started to feel like filling out your taxes, you know, like, and Apple would push you around and tell you you gotta do this or whatever, so we were like, oh, this is kind of like a, an early internet feel again, where you're just like, nobody can tell you you can't do this, uh, and, and so that felt cool, so that felt like a good match with the pump aesthetic too, so. You had mentioned last night that rare Pepe's were something that you kind of like saw, and that was like, when was that, was that right around this time, or? Yeah, right, there was, um, because we were looking for it, but once we sort of realized that blockchain could be a solution, we were like, well, was, has anyone done it? You know, and yeah, I think you, yeah, I think we found our Pepe, and it was like, it was really cool, and it was like a little hard for us to understand, it was meaning like the culture was so dense, you know, so there was that aspect to it. It was like, but it was really funny and cool, and then so we were like, oh, I wonder if this like technically would work for us, but we couldn't, it didn't seem like how we wanted to do it, and so and we had already started learning about Ethereum, so we were like, I think Ethereum is sort of the next generation of this, like it feels like the cleaner way to do it. So, um, but also we had some differences. We wanted there to be like a one and done set, you know, so it wasn't like something where there was more added later or whatever, like we wanted it to be simple and easy to understand. And there were actually periods of time when we thought it might be too simple, like that it had lots, you know, oh, I get it, you know, but, um, but we thought that was important for the idea, you know, digital rarity for it to be like, Oh, there's 10,000, we're done, you know, so. 
So there, there was never a time where we were like, oh, maybe we'll do Crypto Punks, you know, set to season two. That was never a, never a thought there. Yo. <laughs> you and the Labs Crypto Punk season two coming? <laughs> So I wanted to get into again some of the more like nerdier aspects of it. Like these, what were, what did you draw these? Were these just Photoshop, or what did you use to like draw them? Like they're so great. It, it, like as I was, you know, making these visuals and stuff and digging into them more, they're so perfect in terms of the spacing and sort of like how each individual pixel is laid out. Was that you know just done in Photoshop, or was there some other? Yeah, that, no, thanks, of course. Yeah, and it, um, yeah it, was, it, it was just a Photoshop file, you know, 24 by 24 with just a whole bunch of layers. And it was just that thing of just kind of, you know, really worked on the basic head layer and the eyes first and sort of got a head that sort of fit and worked. And then just trying stuff over top of a lot of, you know, make it visible, make it invisible, make little combos to try it out. And then once that was sort of working, then we switched pretty quickly over to having a, like a code-based generator. We, we always called it our like Mr. Potato Head technology. You know, where it's just like pick, pick a head and then put some stuff on it. You know, like get some random things. And and then as we went further, it got more complicated. Like eventually had um, like this is really getting nerdy now. We had an Excel spreadsheet where you could put rules in. You know, like this trait doesn't work with that. You know, mm. like like you know the pilot helmet. We also can't have glasses or something. I think that's the case because it's like there's already glasses there. Right? And so if we get like rules like that. At the, the, the program would read, and then like the, it would have all these exclusions based on that. That's also where we specified the rarities, the, you know, the expected rarities. You know, so like aliens were supposed to be like on average like ten out of ten thousand, ended up being nine, like, that kind of thing. So, so yeah, it just sort of developed from there, and then all of that was kind of being worked on a little bit before we knew what we were doing. With that. You know, it was just like this is cool, but and then and then it was only a few months later that we actually were like, oh, and we'll do it on Ethereum. That's super interesting. Wait, so actually, just as a side note there, somebody had said, somebody told me yesterday that you guys didn't like the look of the aliens and that's why you made so few. Is that true? I don't think that's true for aliens. I think the aliens, we wanted to be visually distinctive, so the idea being that when you saw it, you knew it was the most rare immediately. Uh, we thought that was kind of important. So I don't think... I don't think that I don't think that part's true. I think what it was was some of the more like silly attributes. Like so for example, I think the rarest just like thing you can have is a beanie. And it's like, yeah, we don't need like half the punks to have a beanie, you know, like they made that pretty rare. But we just sort of didn't realize that that was, you know, in hindsight, oh that was making those valuable. You know, I mean didn't, at the time it was just like, yeah, like, you know, there just needs to be a few of those because that would be overwhelming in the set to have a ton of those. So yeah, you get, I feel like you, if you kind of look at the rarity of all the traits. The sillier ones are generally on the rarer side of the spectrum, but then that's definitely made, that's affected, you know, how people look at it. Um, and then, yeah, even just, you know, looking at them all now, like, it was also just a different time, we were just sort of having fun, so there's definitely, like, just, you know, I feel like to make something now, what, if you know people are really going to look at it, you would never do it this way, you know, there's something cool and fun that was like, yeah, we were just having fun too, and doing silly stuff, you know, like, yeah, even like, the, you know, the, the mask, like, why is there a mask that's like three years before COVID, you know? And yeah. it was because Japanese street punk, a lot of times you see them wearing masks, and they can say, yeah, let's, let's put a mask in, you know? Like, okay. <laughs> Remember that guy got mad and was like, this whole thing's bullshit, they added a mask for COVID. <laughs> and, and, and then someone was like, no, the, the mask has always been there. He's like, oh, yeah, dude, this, is, this goes deeper than I thought. <laughs> this shit's nuts. <laughs> Bill Gates told us to put the mask in. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's great. That's great. What were some of the other sort of like inspirations behind some of the like different traits there, like the top hat or the, the VR goggles? And these were these things that were sort of like personal to you guys, or was this sort of, sort of like, oh shit, we got to come up with a bunch of shit to put on these people's hats? <laughs> like a little column A, a little column B. Like, yeah, it was, it was just trying stuff that, yeah, it was like, ah, this would be fun, or like, yeah. Like, and I was looking, you know, I used to kind of do like Google image search for like street punks or like, you know, just punk images and just sort of pulling ideas from that, you know. But then also just wanted to go fairly wide with it, you know, so you wouldn't say that every trait in there is like definitively a punk trait. But 
a lot, a lot of weird clown face stuff because we were kind of like, like, I love you. I don't know, like, it's like maybe that was always maybe going to be like another semi-rare type. It's like, yeah, there's going to be clowns, you know, clowns, zombies. Even then, it's like, let's just drop the clowns and sort of just, just sort of distribute those traits amongst the set. Well, that's so fun. It's right. like some almost going to be, it's going to be clown, but <laughs> Yeah, like, <laughs> When you were like, yeah, it's like punks, it's very punky, and then like, well, why is there a pipe? You know, like, is that a punky thing? No, just because I know how to draw a pipe. <laughs> I know they know how to draw some things. Is there like, um, there's a type of punk that involves like kind of, you know, 19th century stuff? Like oh, steampunk. What are they talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm the asshole. Yeah. <laughs> That's very funny. What about that green hoodie thing? What is that? Inspired by the like checkered hat hoodie. Oh, tassel. 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 Yeah. I think mean, once again that was just pulled off of like a photo of and that might have once again been like Japanese people, I think. And it's one of those things where it doesn't really look that punk, but it, in that picture that I saw it did, you know, the person looked really funky out of that, so yeah, it doesn't really qualify as totally funky, but just somehow yeah, somehow we is there, what are the things about it that still, because maybe it's, maybe there's nothing, but for me, when I release a piece of artwork, there's always, all I can see is a million flaws and things, and it's like, fuck it. What are some of the things that you look back and you're like, god damn it. Yeah. What is it? I'm not gonna name the attribute by name, because I don't Just know what I'm saying anymore. You'll make it more fucking valuable. It's more fun to just say that there's a there's an attribute that is that is shifted by a pixel. It's off in alignment by one pixel, and it kind of drives me crazy. And but I'm gonna leave it to the community to guess which one that is. But there's there's something that's off. Okay, yeah, okay, I, there I you go. I can't unsee it. I can't unsee it, but right. it haunts your nightmares. Yeah, like a week or two after we had lunch it and. You were like, I should have just maybe, like, there's a couple things I would have done differently if I just done one more damn step, but it doesn't matter. No one's gonna. <laughs> We're certainly not gonna be in Charleston in six years at an event. How much time are you gonna spend? It's not gonna be hanging in a museum or anything. You just stand it up the door. That is super interesting. What, um, is there any other. Easter eggs that you put in that nobody's found yet, or there, were there ones that you put in that people found right away? I don't know if there's anything left. I mean, with, with the one, one thing we maybe didn't know about was um, was that people were going to count the number of attributes, and so we had no idea that there was like a step, that there was only a single set of attribute um, for that, even that would be, a, you know, and, and I'm sure like if we had just run the album again, there probably wouldn't have been one. So wait, so you didn't know that that's how it was going to turn out, and yeah. then, but then as soon as it did turn out like that, then did you immediately see it? Like, oh, there's one with seven, or did it take a while for that? No, way? It, it took the community, community to kind of pitch that back to us, to sort of say, like, number of attributes matter, like, you know, having a one attribute is, like, super clean, zero attribute is, like, super rare, and then, and then you have a seven attribute is unique. And, uh, yeah, we just weren't thinking about that at all, and we, we got taken to the cleaners, like, like First like month or so, we had people were buying like zero and one attributes on the bus, and we were like, oh, whatever, man. This is kind of like a boring punk, you know. <laughs> so how long after you guys put it out did you realize the seven trait one existed? That's a good question. It was a little while after. Even like people were asking, like, hey, can you add to the website like searching by trait numbers? And with that, they were like, why? And they're like, <laughs> And then, yeah, because it was a total side effect. There's nothing in, like, it's a side effect of, like, sort of the rule system that it was like, oh, I can manage to cram seven attributes on this one punk, but there, we weren't aiming for some expected number of different attributes. It was all a side effect, so. Just in the logic of being able to put all these different things together, that's super interesting. So when, as, as things started sort of, like, picking up, when was sort of, one of the first times where you were like, okay, wow, this is, people actually sort of like, give a fuck about this, and this, this could be a thing. I feel like maybe we started getting, well, it was weird because like, the very first time that happened was um, after everything was claimed, and then we went from free to one dollar. Like the first time somebody spent more than zero was like, 
oh, that's cool. And it had like a little run-up effect where someone was like, well, they're spending a buck and I want this one. So I'm gonna spend 10, you want, I'm gonna spend 100, and it got to like 150 or something. And so we were like, oh shit, this kind of works. You know, like they, um, so that was the first time. Then it was quiet for like a couple of years, you know. And then in 2020, like maybe pandemic related or whatever, people being at home, we just started noticing like, there's a little more activity in there and the prices are creeping So you up. would say it kind of like went up and then went down for a long time and then sort of yeah. like came back. It wasn't like a slow kind of... I don't think so, no. It was really quiet in 19. Uh, like almost, you know, nothing going on. And it was like like uh, what uh, Snowfro was talking about. It's just a few people in the Discord checking in and like, still into it, you know, and and there was a fun aspect to that because it was just like, the stakes were kind of low, so, and it was just a, a, a kind of a band of people who were like, I don't know if anybody else is going to be into this, but, uh, and, and I think, you know, those community members, you know, I'm sure there's people here who were around in that time, 2018, 2019, you know, we kind of owe it to you guys that we're here now because I'm not sure we would have kept running everything if everyone had just hit the exits at that time, you know, like, but, but there was still this core community just having fun in there, you know, and Discord was, it was never empty, there was always a few things going on, and so we're like, all right, you know, it's low stakes, but it's still fun, you know, like, let's keep it going, right? let's keep running the Discord, running the uh, website, keep it, keep it up, and, and uh, it was because of that, you know. And what were those conversations back then about, like, what were, were people just talking about different trains or different things, or like, were they, did they kind of, was there a sense that people got how monumental this project, you know, could be, if, if more people kind of, like, understood it, or was it just purely just like, I like the hats, if you want to trade me a hat, like, or, you know, was there, like, any talk about the sort of, like, deeper meaning of what this could be? Evolve into. Yeah, I think so, and not so much from us. Like I think you know, like Snowfro and, and people like that who were like really convicted on this being a thing. And I remember meeting a couple people at events, and they would tell me like, "This is going to be important." And I was like, "Okay, dude." And, um, <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> you know, and it's like I don't know. Like I think a little bit. Of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think a little bit too is like when you're too close to it, you know, and it's a thing that was like something you was just on your laptop and now is on, you know, you have a different relationship to it, so it's hard. We learned a lot about the project from people telling us what they thought about it, you know. We're, we're like, oh, it, like in the art world especially, and, and then like people, like, it was like, oh, you, oh, this is you, that to you? Oh, okay, cool, all right. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that's how I meant to do that. I meant that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, that thing you just said. Yeah, exactly. So um, I think it was like, um, yeah, thinking back to that, there was some of that. Like people were like really into it, but also it was sort of natural and that like nobody's, you know, making any money off of it. They just kind of loved it. And so they would just ask for, oh, it would be cool if the website could do this. Okay, yeah, no problem. Or the bot should do that or whatever. And then, so the functionality of the website slowly rolled out of time yeah. in response to community members being like, can you yeah. add this, can you add that? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, pretty much, yep. Yeah. That's super interesting. So what was, I, I understand from the website that this was sort of very instrumental or part of the actual ERC 721 standard. How did that actually come about? Is that something you, you guys, you know, consulted you guys or like? Yeah, we didn't work on it directly or anything, but yeah, it was, it came around pretty shortly after CryptoPunks. They, and, um, and, you know, I, I remember like looking at it when it was in that sort of, uh, in that sort of early phase and seeing it come together and there were there was lots of references like oh you know the, based on what's happened at CryptoPunks we're gonna you know we're gonna do this and so um, and always yeah it generalized much more than you know than, than what we had done. I mean just sort of took years of 20 and just sort of like and, you know <laughs> and, and so they did what we needed to do and then we added the whole marketplace which you know, no one else does that anymore because there's there's other marketplaces, there's you know general marketplaces, but we did all that. And so they, in the standard, they took that out, of course, and they added back in all the, the stuff that we didn't need because we were making that that kind of, you know, Close. it was a closed loop system, so they added like approve and approve all, you know, for, for better or worse. And we kind of, now we're a little bit happier there's no approve all in CryptoPonts because it sort of protects protect people a little bit. But, um, but yeah, so yeah, so it was you know I, from what we heard uh, inspired by, but we didn't directly get involved in it. Yeah. Gotcha. 
what would you, how have you seen, how have you seen the community change over this time? And what would you like to see, if you had a magic wand, what would you like to see the community do more of, less of, differently? Well, I think the change certainly got much bigger. It got much, the stakes got much higher. Um, so, and you know, like we were explaining earlier, before our relationship with that was just be in Discord and someone would ask for something on the website, we'd go do it on the website. And so it was like this kind of, you know, that kind of a relationship. And then it became people asking for things that were like, I don't understand that, you know, but I've always kind of done what people wanted and now I don't know, like, but they, you know, the, the, the motive started changing and the, uh, the temperature went up. And Less of an ask and like, more of a demand. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So I think also we sort of figured out some stuff about ourselves, which is just like, we're not suited for this, you know what I mean? Like I can hang out in a chat room with 20 people, but you know, 2,000, 20,000, it's like, no, not for us, you know? Um, so it was almost more just like, not like, I don't even know what is right here anymore. You know, like this is, we didn't expect this to be this. So it was kind of, we just kind of got beyond our ability to, to cope with or anything, so. The, um, what, what would you like to, is there any sort of like context that you have not seen the punks sort of viewed in that you would like to see them. Obviously they've been in sort of like museums, but there's many other places this, you know, sort of pop culture thing could, you know, be shown or sort of like utilized. Is there any place where it's like, oh man, that would be fucking awesome? Hey, oh sorry. I was just gonna say, um, it's, I think that the, the what's missing and what would be nice uh, is the context of the project as a whole. And I think, um, Ryan was talking about this a little bit earlier, is that we don't think of it as just a, you know, a pixel art generative project. It's like that plus ownership plus a marketplace, that an unstoppable marketplace under no one's control that is sort of like a little mini art world in itself, you know? Um, and that's hard to understand, just in general, as a person who's, if you're not familiar with, you know, technology, blockchain, whatever. But it's also hard to understand when you go to a museum and you see one punk, and you're like, well, I guess, you know, like, uh, but if you, to see the set lets you understand sort of that it's generative, to see it with transactions, and that lets you understand that there's a market there that we consider part of it, you know, it's not separate from the artwork, it is part of the, of the thing. So I think sort of showing more of the context that we think is important for that um, will help. Even a lot of people, it's, I think it's a little more well understood, especially in this group, but there's a period of time where people didn't even understand that it, the market was in the contract. They didn't know that was different than OpenSea, you know, and, and why that was important that it was different than OpenSea. How long after it came out did these marketplaces start popping up? It was pretty soon after because CryptoKitties was traded on OpenSea, right? Yeah, so it was, you know, we launched uh, in June of 2017 and then by the fall, uh, you know, November, whatever, uh, CryptoKitties came along and that was all OpenSea. So yeah, it came along pretty fast afterwards. Uh, yeah, the 721 had a, you know, standard that formed up during that summer as well. So it all, yeah, it all went in that direction very quickly. And I think we thought even for a while that it was going to be a downside, that it was on, that it had its own market and couldn't really interoperate easily. Like later, um, other people developed a, a wrapper contract for it, but we thought like, oh, this is, we're going to get left behind. These marketplaces are more advanced and they can do all these crazy things, you know? Um, but then sort of surprisingly almost, it came back around where it was like, well, actually the experience on this site is designed for one collection only. And, you know, there's no fees, which is a nice bonus as well. But this whole thing can be just like, you go there and everything's designed around this thing. There's no like weird drop downs that don't relate to this project and stuff. So it ended up being like, um, not just like sort of important conceptually, but sort of important in uh, its adoption and usage and all that. Was there any ever thing, because there's obviously no royalties attached to that. And I'm 
assuming obviously at that time the concept of royalties around these things were not really obviously a thing. Was that ever any part of your sort of like thought with that or like was that something you kind of ever considered when you were writing the contract for it? Yeah, we had thought about it a little, but you know, at the time it was, we were just thinking like, you know, could this work at all? We don't even know. So we said that there's no, we can't put any impedance in the way here. You know, like this has to be kind of pure and it just has to work like, it's like we'll, we'll, we'll keep some crypto pumps for ourselves just in case, you know, things go great. But let's not put any impedance, like let's just let, and there's something really cool about that, you know what I mean? Like, the, 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 there's been like enormous, you know, multi-million dollar transactions of crypto pumps where the, the fee was $20. It's like, what other artwork transacts at that scale for that little of fee, you know? So, so we're happy with that decision. But it was something that, yeah, we did consider briefly as we just thought, and that's not the model we want to follow here. You know? I started thinking about it a lot once we crossed two billion dollars in the <laughs> That's when I really started thinking about it. <laughs> oh, fuck your tears. God damn the mind of me. Yeah, I can we see We really that. can't change the contract? That man checks out. That man checks out right there. What, as, as, that, as you did see that, as you did see this, this entire birth of PFPs, which literally was, you know, just something that came out of crypto pumps. As you saw so many different projects, you know, copying or whatever, this project in different ways, what was what was that like to just see this like idea and then just like a bazillion versions of that idea, most of which, let's be honest, kind of blow. <laughs> Is that an art world term? I'm not familiar with that. <laughs> I think that's an art world. I think um, initially it was like, yeah, it's funny because the, like even the number, like 10,000, which was sort of like, ended up being a bit of a Goldilocks number, but we were like, ended up there accidentally and we were gonna do a thousand, that felt too small, we were then we were gonna do some big number, and like that's too many, 10,000, and then even 10,000 felt like too many when no one was claiming any, and you're like, this is so dumb, like there's 8,000 of you know, and, we, and they're free. <laughs> you know, that sucks. Um, but then, um, so I think we went through a period of time where it was like, it was odd. Then it was like, then there was like a lot of, there were some bummer ones that were just straight copies and stuff. We're like, well, this sucks. But there was also a lot of cool stuff where it was like, oh, this has sort of permeated the culture in an interesting way where, you know, I think we kind of became at peace with it and it seemed kind of cool, actually. Like, it was kind of fun that, to see it like, it almost was helpful to be like, oh, what's the, this is so cool, yeah, it's kind of based on that. Like, it kind of ended up tracing back to, to Pumps in a way, so I think we felt like okay with it. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. I kind of created a genre, I guess. That's, that's cool, yeah. So we're happy with it. What has been your sort of, like, how has this, how has your life changed since this happened? I mean, this is obviously a momentous thing and sort of, capture the attention of the entire world. How has that been for you guys and your families and sort of like how do you can manage that? Yeah, it, you know, one of the things that we were saying when it started to get crazy, it started to become obvious that it was becoming a very big thing was, we started to say like, we were happy before. Like we had a lives that we liked, so it's like, let's not, let's not like disrupt and change our lives so much. And we really stuck to that principle. And if you know, someone was asking earlier, Asking me, I was just talking to them, and they said, um, uh, do you, you know, do you see math much anymore? Like, uh, every weekday, you know what I mean? Like, like it's like, it's, it's still just the two of us in an office on computers, you know, and that's what we wanted, you know. So, you know, there's been, like, yeah, obviously, you know, we're here. This is, you know, this is something that was not in our life before. This is, this is amazing to do something like this. But day to day, I feel like our lives are largely the same as they were before, you know. We, we really focus on that. Just trying to kind of get back to doing what we, what we love and kind of experimenting and everything. And so yeah, that's that's my key one. Anyway, yeah. How was your sort of like family? How has everybody sort of like taken this? So uh, when when did your weird parents like? Oh shit! Oh, okay, good, yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, they really didn't get it. I remember t talking to them on the phone one time. I'm like, you know this crypto punks thing? You know, like the thing? And, and they were like, I think so. And I'm like. Yeah, they're like a, they're worth like a thousand 
thousand bucks each now. Like this is, you know, at some point in 2020, and they were like, I don't know about this, you know, like they're, I don't know. That, does, that sounds concerning, you know? <laughs> And uh, that was some sort of like scam. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know what you got yourself into this time, but I don't like it, you know. Um, so it was definitely like a weird thing. I think like there was a few more of the more public things, like the like the auction Christie's that people could understand, were understand to a certain extent. But like, why the fuck are you in an auction though? Like, I understand auctions, but why? So there was a lot of disconnects and like adjustments and weird things like that, but I mean, like John, I just tried to keep it as even keeled as possible, you know? Um, it wasn't really like our goal ever to, you know, do a lot of the, the more public stuff anyway, so we were happy to not do it, um, and to just sort of avoid some of those crazier aspects of it. Yeah, it's definitely, there's been some moments here. So are you guys, like, how, how would you like to see things sort of like move forward? Is there anything that's sort of misunderstood about the project that you, you still would like to educate people about or, or sort of, um, you know, what is your ideal way of 30 years from now, how people view crypto punks? Yeah, I mean, and you know, we've been fortunate enough now to be communicating with museums and, and often when we talk to them, the first thing they talk about is autoglyphs. It's like, oh, we'd love to have an autoglyph. Like, that, you know, I think autoglyphs sort of matches a pattern for them, you know, with sort of it's tied to sort of the history of generative art and everything, and so. But we always tell them, like, don't, don't sleep on crypto you know what I mean? Like, it's like, and, they, it, it, and it's that thing, they're seeing it as like, oh, that's in that PFP sort of like pop culture thing, and so we, we really, I think Matt already mentioned it, but yeah, we, we want to get across that it's like, it's more than that, and it, and it should have, you know, it should be looked at differently than just as sort of the first PFP. But I think other than that, we, we can't complain, you know what I mean? Like it's, um, and, and we have a lot of people in this room to thank for just how sort of far and wide it's gone and how it's viewed. Uh, is there any other way you'd like to see it manifest? Um, I think that, I think that kind of covers it in the sense that, what's funny, at one, at one point someone said like, PFB to me, this is a while ago now, but I was like, what's that? You know? <laughs> I don't know what those word letters stand for. Yeah, they can't, it, does, yeah. it was a while. I would feel like it was sort of fall before yeah. it was fall 2021. Yeah, yeah, and then I'm like, I'm not familiar with that term. Um, so, but I think just what we talked a little bit about it, but like what's different to us about that that makes it not, a, it is a PFP project. Like that's part of what's cool about it is that people find it. Did, did you picture people using this Twitter profile pictures? Uh, yeah. Mostly, that's what you mostly thought people will use. Yeah, and some of that was the experience with um, the Google project and Droidify when we saw people making their Android and putting it as their Twitter. And, and then that was so powerful because it was beside every post they did. And people would, we'd see people asking like, what's that? Where'd you get that from? And stuff, and we're like, oh. So it was this, like, sort of the, the biggest, most important placement you could get on someone's. You saw thing. immediately that was valuable real estate. Like that's yeah, be yeah for sure. Yeah. But also we wanted there to be a reason why you'd interact with the project at all. If they were just like colored squares, it'd be like, oh, I like that square. It's like, it's you have a different relationship with it when it's a face and you might, oh, I want to find myself in this set, like then, uh, and get it, and like, oh, I really want that one. In, in the early days, I'll pay, I'll pay $10 for that, I'll, you know, even though it was just free yesterday, you know, because that looks like me, or it looks like, you know, so we want there to be some reason, some hook for there to be, so that in addition to the, sort of the profile picture being such an important placement. Yeah, awesome. Uh, well, we are about out of time here, guys. Thank you so much for, for being here. I obviously owe massive, massive debt to you, and everybody else is super jacked here. Anything thanks. else? Yeah, thanks to everyone, you know, thanks to the community, thanks for everyone being here. This is the first time we've really been around, you know, a large group of CryptoCon holders like this, and it's, it's really an honor. You know, so we first of many. Everybody, Matt, John.